WBC revealed that you cannot petition to fight for the franchise. In other words, no one can force the franchise holder to a fight, regardless if you are ranked on the WBC below or above the franchise. What's your thoughts on that? I mean, that just shows you that the franchise really doesn't mean anything. It's just a made-up title because if nobody can win it or you can't really defend it, then what would be the point? You know, I, I'm, I'm the WBC champion and I have mandatories and I have people who I have to fight. So that's, that shows that I'm the real WBC champion. Do you remember a time where Lennox Lewis had got the WBC belt when Riddick Bowe didn't fight him? Um, yes, absolutely. Right. When Riddick Bowe uh, defeated Holyfield and he had to fight Lennox Lewis and he just simply dumped the belt in a trash can. Mm -hmm. Lennox Lewis was uh, given the recognition of the world champion. So there is precedent. Yes. You cannot be unjust. Uh, and, and this is what happens. So uh, there is no question Right. You know, so, all this back and forth. So, so let me ask you, Lomachenko, why don't they have the, the mandatories? And then why couldn't we then challenge Lomachenko? Because when you made Lomachenko the franchise champion, you made him untouchable where Devin couldn't then challenge him. And you said that he would become, he was the franchise designation. So then that took us from being able to challenge Lomachenko because we were in yeah, the but, but the champion. WBC has been completely uh, consistent because when when your son uh, at the convention was uh, named officially named champion, why isn't Lomachenko available to us then? No, because Lomachenko right at the convention, he was and he kept on the stage and we have the video yes, and he signed the franchise at that at that same moment. Devon Haney was appointed WBC champion at that same moment. But while he, he, was, on not, stage, while he was on the stage, he's not available to none of your sanctioned body fighters for us to challenge Lomachenko. When he got up on that stage, he was taking off the possibility of us being able to challenge him or petition to fight him. I could have never petitioned to fight him. Yeah, uh, that would have to be a voluntary, yes. That would have to be a voluntary. So when, when you had... The convention, I believe, was September, October. You fought in a very close time. The WBC supported the opponent that you uh, requested. But and that then, was, but that opponent is the opponent that's available. Why wasn't Lomachenko available for us to challenge him? Because Lomachenko was him? appointed franchise champion. But that's what I'm saying is he was not available. So what I'm asking is, is how can a champion that represent you guys, where he's only fought one time for the vacant belt, be considered a supreme champion that no one in the WBC can challenge. Anyone can challenge. How? How they can he? And huh? Look, I don't know why we're having this discussion. No, 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 no. I'm no. I'm asking. I, no, I don't understand where, you, where it's leading to. It is very clear. Uh, I said ten minutes, and it's been forty minutes longer. I don't see where it's going, Mr. Mr. Henry. If you no, want to say the WBC has done wrong to you. Bill asked the WBC, Suleiman, we wanted to fight Lomachenko, but you made him franchise. And that was beyond our reach. We couldn't petition to fight Lomachenko. How can you change the rules now to claiming that the Supreme Champion is the franchise if no one under the WBC can challenge uh, the franchise champion? So the WBC said, you can challenge the franchise champion. Bill Haney asked them, how? How can we challenge him? And that, that's when the WBC said, oh, man, I mean, if you think we've been bad to you, this and that. And the third, he, he changed the topic. He started deflecting. And he started lying about Devin. He was 26 pounds bigger. He hydrated 26 pounds. When Devin never stepped on a scale after he weighed in prior to a fight. So the point that I'm trying to bring up is that the WBC, he was asked a simple question. How can you challenge a franchise champion? How can you petition to challenge a franchise champion? And the WBC refused to answer the question. He deflected because, like I said, the franchise is a witness protection title. It's the NBF witness protection belt. That's what it is. Because when he was asked a direct question, how can we challenge the franchise? He automatically deflected. 
It was the, the WBC president who said out of his own mouth. He said it. I didn't say it. He said the franchise is not a title, it's not a belt, nor a championship. He said it's a designation given. How did you choose Lomachenko? Because I did not choose him. He requested, Canelo requested. So we sent out a vote and we analyzed his history. Ooh, Canelo and Lomachenko requested? Absolutely. Ooh, he just made headlines. Lomachenko. <laughs> he just made headlines. Lomachenko, uh -huh. top rank, requested. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, we analyzed the request. Uh -huh. Top of the top. Find the franchise belt. Can you define it? The franchise is not a belt, it's not a championship, it's a designation given to... Was he telling the truth then when he said that? I assume so. Right, let's assume he was telling the truth. So if he was telling the truth then, then Teofimo is not undisputed. And if he was lying then, and now he's saying Teofimo is undisputed, so was he lying yesterday, but today he's telling the truth? Or was he telling the truth yesterday and today he's lying? Which one is it? You can't have it both ways. Like I said before, <laughs> you could go to box work right now. We see Josh Taylor. Josh Taylor is fighting Ramirez. All the four titles is on the line. The WBC, the WBA, the IBF, and the WBO. On the other hand, you go to box rec, Teofimo and Composer's box rec. You see Teofimo defending the WBO, the WBA, and the IBF. He ain't defending none of the WBEC titles he has. He claims he has a super title, and he claims he has a franchise title. However, neither of them is on the line. So how can you be the WBC champion, but you're not defending your WBC title? And the WBC title is not on the line. So even if Composis beats him, he's not going to be undisputed because he's not going to have the WBC title, none of them. None of the boxing websites got Teofimo as undisputed. None of the section embodies got Teofimo is undisputed. If you Google undisputed, the definition of undisputed is that there is no dispute who is the champion. And regardless of how you feel about T.O. and Devin, there's a dispute. That's why we're talking about it right now. That's why the whole boxing world talking about it right now. So if there's a dispute, that contradicts the definition of undisputed. That means T.O. is not undisputed. Again, Teofimo is paying sectioning fees for that witness protection he's getting. 6 9 pays for witness protection. So if Tio pays fees for a belt that's not real, it's because that's the fees for the NBF witness protection. It don't come for free. I just want to point out the contradiction in the WBC franchise belt against the WBC rules. Let's just all just think about this real quick. Ryan Garcia is a WBC interim champion. By the rules of the WBC, if the regular champion vacate the belt, Ryan Garcia would be elevated to full champion, just like Devin Haney would. If Teofimo Lopez were to vacate all his belts after fighting Cambosos, Ryan Garcia would still remain the interim champion. Why is that? Because he's not the WBC champion. That spot is Devin the Dream Haney. If Devin Haney vacates, so the franchise belt contradicts the rules made by the WBC and every other organization. And on top of that, Mauricio Suleiman made it clear that Lomachenko, as well as Canelo, requested the belt, and yet you have Lomachenko here talking to Devin Haney saying he never had any control on that. That happened automatically. He had no idea that was going to happen. So once again, someone's lying. Now, whether it's Mauricio Suleiman or Lomachenko, we don't know. But what I do know is, is that the WBC franchise belt is not the real champion, at least under the WPC. That's all I had to say. That's a great point. How did you choose Lomachenko? Because I did not choose him. He requested, Canelo requested. So we sent out a vote and we analyzed his history. Ooh, Canelo and Lomachenko requested? Absolutely. Ooh, he just made headlines. Lomachenko. <laughs> he just made headlines. Lomachenko, uh -huh. top rank, requested. Uh -huh. And let me tell you, we analyzed the request. Uh -huh. Top of the find top. the franchise belt. Can you define it? The franchise is not a belt. It's not a championship. It's a designation given to elite, unique fighters who carry the industry of the sport of boxing. Canelo Alvarez and Lomachenko are two sensational fighters who carry the industry. As 
ask Cameron Duncan, do top rank have like uh, um, uh, columns of fighters? And they say, we don't want this guy fighting the black fighter. We don't want this fighter fighting a Mexican fighter and so on and so forth. You gotta get into the racial stuff, huh? No, I'm not. I'm just. I, I'm asking. Uh, that's a theory there by the greatest matchmaker, probably in my opinion, ever. Uh-huh. And uh, I'm not gonna mention his name either, but uh-huh. you know what I'm talking about. Uh-huh. And uh, he used to have a thing up on his board: NBF, no black fighters. Uh-huh. And when I was taught to bring up a fighter, um. You know, and again, it's just, he used to say to me, you can go anywhere in the country, and I'm going to leave it at this, and I won't go into a long discussion, mm-hmm. because yeah. people are people in God's eyes, and yeah. we're all the same. He used to say to me, you can go anywhere into a city in America, mm-hmm. or anywhere in the world, and ask a white guy, and he didn't say any other, he didn't say anything about a Hispanic, anything. Ask a white guy to throw a jab, and half of them are going to turn backwards and throw it like a girl and everything. Ask any black man on a street corner in any city in the world, and they will snap out a jab and a heartbeat. Mm-hmm. And I used to laugh. He said, they're just more physically gifted. Mm-hmm. And he said, and so they have speed, and better to stay away from them. Mm-hmm. Nothing personal. So... I said, okay, and I've lived by that, mm. and, um, you know, I, you know, I don't want to sound like some weird guy, but, um, you know, you're trying to be safe with your guys, and so, he, yeah, yeah, there is a thing about that, you know, but not in a bad way, in a very respectful way, you know, to be careful, so that's all. The last man even said they doing that to protect them. Right. Somebody beat them, but they don't get a belt. There you go. The franchise belt is to protect them from the big black guys. <laughs> <laughs> so, so you 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 would favor Devin Haney to beat Vasily Lomachenko? And with the fighter, I'm only going to put him in a fight that I believe that he can win. Right. So, I I don't know how to answer that question. Did you say you would only put your fighter in a position where in a fight where he can win? Where I believe he could win. Yeah, I don't put a fighter in uh, where he has no chance and he's just in there for a payday for me and him. I don't do that. So, so is but it more about how you I don't feel? put a fight out. That again goes back to Leonard Ellaby. What he was trying to say it's risk reward. Right. So if you were in a situation where you felt like, I'm going to just use hypotheticals. If you thought that uh, Devin Haney was a bad matchup for Tiafimo Lopez, in essence, you wouldn't make that fight because you didn't want to put Tiafimo in a situation where you felt like he couldn't win. Is that what I'm hearing? Only if, I mean, you sometimes make a fight because it, if, let's say the fighter has a 40% chance of winning. So he's like, right. in your mind, an underdog. If the reward is great, you make that fight. It's risk-reward. 